Welcome to the May Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. My name is Dr. Amber McNamara. I'm the veterinarian here at the center where we care for over 1,500 injured and orphaned wildlife patients every year. The center also serves as a learning laboratory for Lees McRae students studying wildlife biology and wildlife rehabilitation. These are our ambassador display cages. As part of their education, students learn to educate the public using our non-releasable wildlife ambassador species. This is our classroom space adjacent to the Wildlife Rehabilitation Clinic. In this space, we hold several different wildlife rehabilitation classes, labs, and public presentations. This is the lobby where finders bring injured and orphaned wildlife to students and staff for evaluation. Finders complete an intake form to share information about the circumstances of the animal. Students are a crucial part of the success of the center and participate in all aspects of care. Patient exams, feeding and cleaning, laundry, administering medications, assisting with anesthesia and x-rays, and evaluating patients' progress with the goal of releasing animals back to the wild. Everything starts here in the emergency room. After students and staff collect finder information and identify the patient's species, they perform an initial examination and determine next steps, including fluids, medication, food, housing needs, and more. Each patient is assigned a number, and all information is recorded in our electronic medical records database called RaptorMed. Animals are housed based on their species group in the mammal room, raptor room, or songbird room. This helps to reduce stress so that prey species, like an eastern cottontail rabbit, aren't housed in the same space as their predator, a great horned owl. The fronts of patient cages are covered to reduce the stress of human interaction and to give patients the privacy and quiet needed to heal. Students are taught appropriate handling techniques to ensure patients can be restrained safely and with minimal stress. The songbird room is generally quite busy from around mid-March through September. The center takes in hundreds of injured and orphaned baby birds who need feeding, sometimes as frequently as every 30 minutes. Once birds are self-feeding and developing traits characteristic of their species, it's time to move outside. Our surgical suite is equipped with the necessary tools to perform a variety of surgical procedures. Students learn how to set up and monitor anesthesia and assist the surgeon during procedures such as hook removal, shell repair, or wing pinning. Our x-ray machine can produce a high quality digital x-ray in a matter of seconds. Having it situated adjacent to the surgery suite allows us to take images immediately before, during, or after surgical procedures. Students also learn how to set up the machine and start to understand how images are interpreted. In our lab space, we perform basic blood work, cytology, and fecal exams. Many of our patients have internal parasites that we can identify and determine whether treatment is warranted. The recovery room is a quiet space away from the busier part of the clinic. There is an oxygen cage available here for critical patients. The treatment room is used for ongoing care in a quiet environment. This room is used for bandage changes, laser or acupuncture treatments, or for feeding babies. This room has one of our two gas anesthesia machines, which are very similar to what you would find in a domestic veterinary practice. If a bandage change or other treatment would be too stressful or painful with the animal awake, we can briefly anesthetize them to get the procedure done quickly and safely. Welcome to our laundry room. We have two commercial washers and dryers. This is a crucial step, not only in providing clean habitats for our patients, but in learning techniques to minimize disease transmission between patients and from animals to humans. Proper diet preparation is a crucial part of wildlife rehabilitation. With more than 100 different species seen at the Wildlife Center, diets can vary a lot, from minced fruit for cedar waxwings, to specialized formula for infant mammals, to the concoction known as finch mash. Once students learn how to identify species, especially songbirds, Learning what diet they need is the next step. These pre-release cages are the last step for our patients prior to their release. 
A variety of sizes and types of cages give patients the opportunity to acclimate to weather and build stamina. Staff can confirm their release readiness by evaluating behaviors, eating habits, and specific skills that are required for their species to thrive in the wild.